ever been in a uh, relationship with a colleague or maybe you are in a relationship with a colleague we just want to find out how is it going that is what we are looking at today so in the studio i'm not alone as usual i am with mr owen katongo kabando is management and leadership advisor good afternoon good afternoon patricia how are you doing i'm doing great how are you doing i'm very very fine amazing yeah. so last week we had an amazing conversation and uh, we just thought of why not have another topic we looked at mental health last week and today yeah. we're looking at uh workplace romance and right. for conversation i must make mention and i'm looking forward <laughs> to hear what our viewers have to say about our topic of discussion for today uh, that's true it's quite a sensitive topic <laughs> very sensitive <laughs> Start just to, 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 to start our conversation, Mr. Kalanda, if you can just define what workplace romance is all about. Maybe people are asking themselves questions. What are they talking about? What is uh, workplace romance? Yeah, uh, so workplace romance basically you are focusing on the relationships that do happen mm -hmm. in workplaces and not somewhere else. So it's, it's, it's really the relationship that happens between employees mm -hmm. in a workplace. Now, in a very uh, short way. How is uh, a workplace romance maybe different from other forms of romance we hear and talk about? The only difference really is that workplace romance um, is romance that is happening in a workplace mm -hmm. and uh, usually in the workplace there could be policies and procedures that guide how uh, employees may have to behave towards each other mm -hmm. and even if they are going to be into, uh, entering into relationships how they can conduct themselves so that they do not disturb uh, their work colleagues, which is a little bit different from any other relationship, you know, out of the workplace. Because mm -hmm. outside of the workplace, uh, literally, uh, the partners can behave whichever way they want. Yeah. They do things whichever way they want to do things. But when it comes to workplace romance, it's the relationships that are happening within the, the institution. Therefore, sometimes uh, workplace uh, policies do take center stage in terms of governing how uh, those employees could actually uh, behave um, towards each other and also towards the other work colleagues. You are a neuropsychologist, I must make, make mention for the sake of uh, the viewers maybe are watching us for the very first time. Now from a psychologist's point of view, what brings about workplace romance? Yes, so when it comes to workplace romance, basically there are a number of factors that could influence um, these, these uh, things. Uh, the first one you have to look at is, I'll, I'll try to simplify things. The first one could be um, proximity. So when you look at, there's a principle that we call the principle of proximity in psychology. What it basically means is that when you put two people or more people together, eventually they start to kind of start to understand it, each other because of that proximity. Mm -hmm. um, so they, with that proximity, you are talking about people coming to work every day, mm -hmm. uh, they are in the same place, probably maybe in the same office, or even if it's not in the same office, they could be in the same uh, workplace. So what that does is that it brings these people together and then it starts to increase the uh, chances or possibilities of them starting to understand each other and probably starting to go out uh, with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the other principle you can look at from the psychology point of view is what we call this principle of reciprocity. What that means is that from the beginning, for instance, you have these employees just working together, there's nothing much, so from when the, the one employee starts to do uh, a certain gesture, to the other. It can start from just the highs, highs. Uh, at first, nobody really cares, just greeting each other. The next thing, it goes to the next level. And when one employee does one thing to the, for the other, the other one feels obligated to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. uh, what that means is that just from their greeting, then it could, it would escalate. The next thing it is, oh, have you taken your tea or your coffee? Maybe they will bring a, 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 a coffee cup or whatever to the other, and the other one feels they, they need to reciprocate and give it also um, a shot. Then from there, it could be issues of birthdays and so on. So that you find that as one person does one activity to this other person, the other person feels the need to reciprocate in a similar manner. So that now starts to escalate things um, uh, from there. So that need 
the, the, for reciprocity, mm -hmm. it can actually sometimes uh, lead to this kind of things. Uh, apart from that, uh, the third issue we can look at is really the need, I'll simplify it by simply saying the, the, the need to, to feel valued and loved and so on. So you find that as, as human beings, human beings have got this need. Mm -hmm. um, everyone wants to, to feel that they are valued. Everyone wants to feel uh, that they are with people who appreciate them. Mm -hmm. I know some people say, ah, me, me, I don't need that, please. Eventually, everyone at some point feels they need to be with people or to be in a surrounding where they feel valued. Yeah. And what that starts to do actually in terms of the workplace, in the workplace, you have these colleagues that you're working with mm -hmm. and eventually they are making you, maybe you have done a good project, they'll be there clapping for you. Uh, as things go on, People, especially those who are not going to go into this relationship, they start to feel that this is the person who value me a lot. You know, at work you are maybe a star. Maybe when you go back home, you are trying to tell the partner about <laughs> what happened at work. They are not even interested. So you find that the, the people around them in the workplace who make them feel like stars or valued and so on, mm -hmm. they, such people may end up starting to feel uh, they need to start a certain relationship with, with that person. Um, the other aspect, maybe the fourth issue to look at is that sometimes even for people who are in relationships, mm -hmm. they go through some challenges. They could argue, they could have fights, or whatever it is that could happen uh, uh, in those relationships. And I'm not talking about the relationship in the workplace. I mean those who are dating or who, are, who, are, who have fiancés or they have wives or husbands. Now, when they have such problems in their own relationship with their partners, sometimes they start to find some peace and comfort in a colleague at work who seems to be very understanding and seems to be uh, being there for them and so on. So those kind of things start to now lead most of the times to these workplace romances that we're talking about. There, could, there are a lot of factors that actually uh, we do look at in, in our various sessions in terms of what leads to this. But the major ones are those they need to feel loved, the, the principles of, of proximity, people being together, as well as uh, reciprocating and so on. Mm -hmm. do not allow uh, relationship, romantic re uh, relationships at uh, workplaces. Yeah. What is your take in such kind of a situation? Because we believe that certain bosses would not allow, but there are some our colleagues who just say, no, 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 I like this one, and I think I want to uh, maybe pursue this person. What is your take about it? Is it okay to have a romantic relationship at a workplace? Yeah, so... <laughs> It's <laughs> just when we, we posted the, uh, the, on this topic uh, and there were a lot of questions that started to come in our inbox. Really, uh, the aspect around is it okay, is it not okay? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, in many companies, companies do create um, policies around the relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, so these policies, they do guide how employees are expected to perform and they the way employees are expected to behave towards each other. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that in the policies, they will define what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Uh, so is it OK? Is it wrong? No. The, as long as the policies do not limit the freedoms of people, mm -hmm. um, remember, you have your human rights. You can associate with anyone and so on. But to every right, there are also obligations. This is what we have to emphasize. The fact that you have a right, you can mingle with anybody. You also have certain obligations. If you are in a relationship with another person outside of your institution, for instance, you have those obligations. Um, so also within the institution, you cannot be seen to be all over the place doing whatever you think you should be doing with this person that you think you love um, and not paying attention to what that could be doing to your work colleagues. So this is why uh, companies usually do come up with workplace uh, policies around uh, relationships uh, so that employees can then uh, just behave in line with us. Um, as you know, there are sometimes why we say that these relationships are not, um, should not be uh, stopped completely is because some people actually do find their loved ones uh, from the workplaces. Mm -hmm. 
remember, if you look at, um, you have been posted in this place, it's far from, from town, mm -hmm. and you are a teacher, and you <laughs> The only person you find is a colleague there. Some people end up getting married. Some are nurses, some are minors, whatever it is. It's so, a situation, Mr. Kavanda, where uh, employers want to avoid certain situations where maybe if they fight and these guys will be unable to deliver work, how it is expected. Yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. So, in looking at those things, we can actually start by looking at, um, first of all, let's let's segment how these uh, workplace relationships could work. Mm -hmm. uh, there are like three, four levels. There could be so many levels at which these workplace relationships work. Mm -hmm. uh, an employee going out with a fellow employee almost at the same level, mm -hmm. or an employee going out with, uh, with, a, with a boss, or the bosses or the managers going out with each other, mm -hmm. or the managers uh, going out with an employee who's below them. So for such, it's important to actually understand what is it that we are now dealing with. Mm -hmm. So when we look at uh, the first part, um, with an employee who is, let's say, a junior employee, and they're going out with another uh, fellow employee who, are, who is almost at the same level, there are certain things that they need to take into consideration. So for instance, uh, you have to take into consideration the workplace policies that are in place. So what that means is that what does the company say about the relationships? Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you do not go against the policies that have been put in place. Uh, the second issue to look at is when you are going into this relationship, what are you trying to achieve at the end of the day? If you are, like we've said, we are now talking about people who are at the same level. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that you are trying to achieve? Is, just, is it just a relationship? Is it just a, a, for fun? What exactly are you entering? Uh, this uh, relationship into what are, what are you trying to get out of it uh, the third issue to look at is also your own uh, status as an as an employee as a junior employee are you in a relationship with somebody um, wh at what stage are you mm -hmm. uh, are you married are you dating someone or whatever it is because those things could come and have an impact on this relationship that you want to have in the company. Mm -hmm. uh, the other things to look at at the same level is, like I did mention, close to the second issue of what is it that you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. If the two of you are going to focus on building this healthy relationship mm -hmm. that you are building to become a uh, husband and wife in future, mm -hmm. then you know that you are very serious with what we're doing. And basically that will start even to change the way you behave towards each other and so on. Uh, so that is on the positive side. Mm -hmm. uh, at that level, you also need to be aware of the negative side. That while at that level you are, you are dealing with your fellow employee who is at the same level with you, it also sometimes leads to problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's when you have your own fights. So you find that uh, this employee who is going out with a fellow employee at that junior level, they start having these fights. So now they bring the fights that they had in their personal life at home or wherever they were coming from, or in the bus or in the car, that, that problem now comes to the office. And the people, and those two, sometimes they are not collaborating. Yeah. Worse enough, if they are on the same team, they stop working together. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are from different departments, there is no you know, collaboration. So those things at that level could actually start to affect the... the the work and the work environment starts to be very bad. Uh, apart from that, it's to look at the aspect that when you, as a junior officer, you are going out with another junior officer, as an example, are you also ready to handle things like breakups? Break because yes, those things do happen. And we have to be mindful that if it ever happens, this is somebody that you were going out with and you really loved, with all your heart, as people say, <laughs> so, <laughs> then at the end of the day, you see that your partner, who is your work, workmate, mm -hmm. tomorrow is starting to go out maybe with another person. Are you ready to handle such things? And this is where you find that um, the person, now because you are in the same environment, mm -hmm. and even sometimes people even know about your relationship, and that now makes it very difficult to, mm -hmm. for, for that employee to actually operate because they then have a challenge adjusting 
to being seen as a person who was dumped or whatever, and it starts to affect their productivity. So you have to be mindful even as, at that level as you go out with somebody who's at the same level as yourself. I know you've mentioned uh, some of the things uh, where employee, what employees have to put into consideration when they want to engage themselves in uh, romantic uh, relationships. Now, when a junior employee, Mr. Kanda, wants to start uh, a workplace romance mm -hmm. with a work colleague at the same level, what should they take into consideration? I know you've uh, pinpointed some of uh, the things that they have to put into consideration, but if you can... Again, just briefly, uh, just highlight us what they have to put into consideration. Yes, so key to all those things, like mm -hmm. I did mention, one, what is their relationship status? Mm -hmm. um, are they in a relationship outside of the company? Because that could mean that now they have that commitment. Two, like I mentioned, you could also look at the fact that what is it that they're trying to achieve out of this relationship? Mm -hmm. If it is a relationship that they have to with this colleague at the same level, mm -hmm. it's a relationship that they have to build, to lead into marriage, then they start to even behave as such because they are working towards that in a very, very serious manner. Mm -hmm. uh, the other aspect that I think could also be looked at is where the employee has to also be able to see um, how will they handle if uh, the situation, if ever it led to a breakup. Mm -hmm. So all those things have to be taken into consideration among so many other factors. Now, in a situation where a junior employee maybe mm -hmm. wants to start a workplace performance with a senior member of staff, mm -hmm. what should they also take into consideration? Yeah, so again, <laughs> for, uh, those things happen a lot where maybe a junior wants to go out with a senior mm -hmm. employee. Now, with those kind of things, what starts to happen and what should be considered? One, mm -hmm. again, it is the... the the relationship status that that employee has. Uh, so, if it's a female employee, she has to think, does she have a boyfriend who's serious or is she married? Mm -hmm. If it is a, a, a male employee, again, he has to ask himself the same questions. Because those things, like we've said, do have an impact. The last thing you want is somebody from outside coming to a pick a fight in this workplace because he has heard or she has heard that somebody at the company is going out with their partner. Uh, secondly, in terms of, again, if the senior officer is maybe single and this person is also single mm -hmm. and they are looking at um, building a relationship that could lead into marriage, mm -hmm. again, that could work well. It's, it's, it's a positive mm -hmm. if, and they just have to make sure that they are behaving in line with all the policies that are in place as well as making sure that they do not make other employees uncomfortable mm -hmm. with their relationship. Um, the challenge that comes, and, and we always say, if you ever going to go into such kind of a situation, mm -hmm. you also have to be mindful that it has its own serious negative implications. Um, with a junior officer going out with a senior officer, mm -hmm. there is some level of, um, some people feel like it's an achievement, so, what that starts to do eventually starts to change even the way this junior officer works because now they think hey i've made it oh i'm going out with this person who's higher uh, they feel a certain sense of protection that this you know this person will speak for me if anything went wrong and that starts to change the way they behave and sometimes maybe that junior officer not even feel it that or even be aware that they are changing in the way they, they behave. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes even a bigger challenge where this junior officer is dating someone who is even the superior to their own immediate uh, supervisor Supervisa. or the line manager uh, because now she may think, well, oh, I'm talking to the bosses, who, who are you, my immediate boss? It also can be a male who is also dating a bigger female boss. Mm -hmm. They also will start behaving the same way. Now, what that does is that this junior officer, eventually they start to risk their own job. Because, yes, you can receive all the protection from mm -hmm. the bosses, but at some point, if you are not performing and not behaving also in, the line, in line with the requirements, somehow, somehow, you will be fired. And it becomes a big challenge. So it's, 
it's just important that even the junior officers they ever think of dating a, a senior mm -hmm. they should be aware that there are also these risks mm -hmm. they could also be like we talked about uh, juniors who are at the same level mm -hmm. yeah, it could also happen at that level where the this junior uh, female officer or male mm -hmm. officer is going out with this boss and then the boss starts to go out with an hour what happens now so because <laughs> So again, we find that there are always cut fights that they start happening in, 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 in a workplace, which is not what in, uh, uh, businesses are created for. <laughs> uh, companies are created to deliver certain services or deliver certain products, and that should be the focus, and not people fighting each other, and making rings at the workplace now. Well, so. explains Mr. Kanda to our viewers, if you've just joined us, you're watching Labor Matters right here on KBN TV. So if you have any question, comment or contribution about our topic of discussion for today, all you have to do is use the number which is right on your TV screen. Send us a text message or better go on our Facebook page, which is KBN TV. Drop us a comment. We want to know what is your take about our topic of discussion for today. We are looking at workplace romance. That is what we are looking at today. So if you've ever been in a situation where you were dating a colleague, how was it you want to find out? Did it affect uh, your, your, your performance at work? We want to find out from you how is it going if you are dating a colleague. Now, Mr. Kaunda, coming to you, uh, when a senior employee also maybe wants to start a workplace romance with uh, a work colleague at the same level, what do they also take into consideration, looking at the fact that they are basically in the same level? What should they put yeah. into consideration? Yes, yeah, so for the senior staff, if mm -hmm. they ever have to start uh, those relationships, again, like we've said, same thing that applies to the junior staff could mm -hmm. also apply to the senior staff. If they are, they need to also look at their own relationship status. I, am I in a relationship with another person who's outside of the company? Mm -hmm. Am I married? Remember, there are demands when you are married that you behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, that is one. The other part to also look at is what is the aim of the same relationship. Again, the same similar thing with, with the juniors. At that level, yes, you can, you can be in senior management, mm -hmm. but maybe also single and you are searching. So really the company might not stand in your way to stop you from finding what you call them, what, uh, like uh, servants. <laughs> My so, my maybe a is also a fellow senior officer in, mm -hmm. in the company. So again, that could happen. Um, but what we do also emphasize on the flip side is that when senior officers start these relationships, mm -hmm. especially relationships that are not aimed at uh, maybe these two people getting married, mm -hmm. uh, they should be aware that one. Um, there are issues of boundaries that they are, they are breaking. Uh, they have to be aware of what the workplace policies do provide. Mm -hmm. Does the workplace provide for them to be in such a relationship? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the policies that are there. Uh, thirdly, they have to also look at what is the implication of such a relationship mm -hmm. in terms of the perceptions also from their juniors. What environment are they creating? Because if they if they enter into this relationship for purposes of just having fun and whatever, that culture is slowly being seen by other employees mm -hmm. and the juniors, and that starts to become the norm of that uh, company. On the negative side also is the fact that yes, even as fellow senior officers, as they are going out, uh, all these things yes they could happen, mm -hmm. but sometimes breakups also coming. Because maybe one of the officers is now also seen a bigger fish. So, <laughs> while we're senior, there is always senior. There's always someone senior. So, what happens at that point? Uh, or if just one of the two of you, one of them just loses interest, mm -hmm. uh, worse enough, this senior officer starts to go out with a junior officer, who apparently is now looking even younger and more beautiful than you. Uh, so, <laughs> You find now that this is where you find managers losing it, sometimes mm -hmm. even wanting to, uh, to fire a junior officer. Mm -hmm. So it's important that even at that level, uh, when a senior officer is going out with another senior officer, they are very clear about what they are trying to achieve. But most importantly, again, 
we emphasize is this within the policies of the company and also their own religious beliefs mm -hmm. because it's also important to take all these things into consideration and the fact that they are role modeled um, for the junior officers mm -hmm. that are supervised. You've explained what junior employees and uh, senior employees should basically put into consideration when they want to engage themselves in workplace romance. Now, in a situation where a senior employee wants to start a workplace romance with uh, a junior or member of staff, what should they also put into consideration? Because I believe he is a senior mm -hmm. or she is a senior yeah. and you want to uh, start dating someone who is a junior what should they put into consideration do you also have negative impacts or positive impacts when they engage themselves in such kind of vice well so <laughs> for, the, for senior officers if they they're going to start a relationship with a junior officer mm -hmm. uh, that one again it could also happen but again, it's important that the, that senior officer thinks a lot about what is likely to happen. And again, like you said, it could be a male, it could be female. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that it's one-sided. So when it comes to dealing with a junior, mm -hmm. yes, they are, in terms of advantage, many juniors may want, like we said, they may want to go out with the, the big bosses. You know, it's, it's like they have these bragging rights. And in many cases, the big bosses also have money. So... <laughs> Uh, whereas a, a junior boyfriend will not be able to <laughs> to provide some money or certain things that the, this junior female officer or male officer that's going out with them mm -hmm. may want. Uh, at that level, that man or woman is able to provide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we need to be very clear. Mm -hmm. Again, is that relationship that you are starting a serious relationship, a genuine relationship that is actually focusing on the two of you getting married. Mm -hmm. Again, a senior officer can get married to a junior officer. But if the relationship is one that is aimed at just having fun, mm -hmm. you need to then be very clear about what this will entail in terms of the negative um, things that come with such relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, uh, for instance, number one, when the senior officer starts to go out with the junior officer, mm -hmm. you are also uh, looking at sometimes it's like you're abusing your authority and the junior officer could um, come and raise that issue at some point. Mm -hmm. And so the senior officer has to be very, very careful. Secondly, when the senior officer starts to go out with the junior officer, mm -hmm. It also creates uh, problems in terms of um, favoritism. The, the more someone knows someone, the more they are likely to start being favored. Remember the principles we did talk about earlier on. Mm -hmm. So what that starts to do is that the manager or the supervisor at that point starts to, to behave in a, in, a, in a more positive manner towards this person. This person might not even deliver on certain weights that they are giving, mm -hmm. it becomes okay. But when the person B does the same, this one is it's it's shouted, issue. it's an issue. It's yeah. shouted that, you know, they are even threatened to be fired. But employees are looking and they are seeing the, the different ways in which you as a manager are treating person B versus mm -hmm. person, I mean person A versus person B. And they can put one and two together and say, mm hmm, I bet you go. There's something else going on. So it, it, it's important to, to think through what does this actually mean. Mm -hmm. Apart from favoritism, there is also the risk that the, that relationship will start affecting productivity. Mm -hmm. Because while the other team might be uh, given work and they want to deliver on certain things, you have this employee that, again, sometimes is difficult to manage because uh, you try to push for work. Maybe she's the one who even tells the team, ah, guys, yeah, we are tired. Yeah. Hey, let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah, he will understand. <laughs> so when you are big boss, you are better, he comes, he, he can't shout. Yeah. Because part of the team, there is also that person. So, <laughs> so it, becomes, it becomes a challenge. Um, and also, when we say he can't, we are also referring to also the females. Yes. 
that also the, bo the big boys could also be in the same situation. So mm -hmm. that starts to affect the uh, productivity of the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are like really negative issues that I have to look out for. And as we said, there is also a high risk uh, around uh, harassment mm -hmm. um, because if that employee, a junior employee, goes and reports, I remember things could start all nicely, mm -hmm. yeah, all oh, lovey dovey, everything is nice. But at some point, that junior employee now says, maybe because something has happened, which she doesn't agree with, or he doesn't agree with, mm -hmm. and then that junior employee now says, well, look, uh, this man is harassing me. Now at that point, you are in very, very serious uh, issues. So it is it's very, very important to be aware uh, that you protect yourself and just do the right thing. Maybe would you also uh, maybe just define workplace harassment because you've mentioned it. Maybe it's been happening in a number of organizations and uh, some, some employees don't know that this is workplace harassment. Maybe if you can just define it for the sake of the viewers. All right, so when it comes to harassment, mm -hmm. basically there are two levels of harassment. Uh, one is that which does not even involve physical contact. Mm -hmm. So if you tell someone it was just a way that maybe I like you or I, you know, pass comments, you know the comments. It is on live TV, so we can't say much. So <laughs> you come to sessions that we want, we go into those details. But certain comments that make the other person to be uncomfortable, annoyed, um, uh, or threatened, all those, even though there is no actual physical contact, mm -hmm. uh, those will be considered as harassment. Okay. And therefore, it's important. And, and I know um, these issues, you know, like we are colleagues from, from the north and the ones from the east, mm -hmm. you know, Abanda, or, so they say yeah, from, the, from the north we have these traditional things, the Chimbuyas, mm -hmm. we, we, which we pray. If a, a northern and the eastern, for instance, they are joking, there's male and female. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a Mwamba from the north is passing comments to this uh, uh, Jane Piri from the east. They can take it now, it's a joke, we were cousins, there's this cousinship. Mm -hmm. But if she says no, she has said no. So it's important to understand that you cannot hide, and these are some cases we've dealt with in, in our long history here. Mm -hmm. We you cannot hide behind such things. I oh, know it was Jimbuya who we were joking. No, so when the person says no, they have said no. There is also an issue around um, that culturally that a woman says no, it doesn't mean no. That's a yes. You know, say yes, you just, you just have to keep pushing a little bit because they, you know, they can't just say yes at the beginning because they will look like, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. as we are on live TV. But the issue here is that in the workplace, please, you don't take those things as jobs. If the person says no, they have said no. Yeah. Don't take it that no, this is a no before the five no's, which will then translate to yes. yes. No. Now, what is the impact, Mr. Panda, of workplace performance on the relationship of uh, maybe employees with their partners outside of the workplace? Yeah, um, maybe even before I answer that, let me even just add that while we talked about those, the harassment which doesn't involve touching, mm -hmm. the other side actually involves touching. There is actual physical contact. So mm -hmm. uh, that one we need to be also be very, very clear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe you see something nice, mm -hmm. both male and female. <laughs> you want to touch. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not allowed. So, uh, when the person says, no, the way you are touching me or the way you are coming close to me, I, I'm uncomfortable, you take it that way and then you, you stop. Because at the end of the day, there is high likelihood that if you continue, they can easily raise concerns around the harassment. And then it becomes a little bit of a challenge for you to defend yourself. Um, these are very sensitive cases that are actually very difficult even for HR mm -hmm. because they involve the person and how that person feels. If they're happy or they're not happy, they have said they're not happy. So uh, you can't interpret on the other side and say, no, but it was okay. No, the person has said they're not happy. Um, 
Um, Mr. Gonda, I'm not thinking. In a situation where a senior maybe was trying to, uh, to, to maybe have a relationship with a junior and then a junior says no, maybe this person becomes very scared. Maybe if I say no, I might lose this job. Or maybe can we also give an example of where uh, maybe a senior also, a, a, a senior, yeah, maybe w wants to involve themselves in a relationship with a junior, and then this person says no. What are the implications of having such kind of scenarios around an organization? Yeah, so this is, um, again, the thing we talk about, especially for management and mm -hmm. employees, that the em employers have to ensure that they have policies in place that actually help employees to know what rights they have. Mm -hmm. like what that means is that from the very beginning, you want to inform the employees at the induction stage mm -hmm. that this is our policy here. Mm -hmm. If you feel that someone is approaching you and they are not happy, you have the right to say no. And if mm -hmm. that continues and they don't seem to stop, this is the channel you can take. So mm -hmm. in many companies, they, they, they outline the channel for you to, to follow. If it has to go to HR or maybe HR beyond HR to the the CEO of the company, it can even reach the board. Beyond that, those things could end up in court. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's important that companies make these policies clear, mm -hmm. as well as the procedures and that an employee can follow. Otherwise, like you've said, it becomes very dangerous for the junior staff, and they want to safeguard their job. They have been hunting for this job for seven years, they have been poor, they have suffered, so coming to get this job and Sometimes, yes, they could feel that pressure to, to give in because they think that's the only way to keep the job. But if you create, if, if the HR and management create the right culture in there, they make things known to the employees mm -hmm. and in that way employees feel more protected. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so then I can now come to your question around what does this uh, relationship, workplace romances and what, it, what they do to, uh, to the partners outside the company. Yeah. Now, that is a very, very important question and very critical question. Like we've been mentioning, if this person who starts this workplace romance is actually in a relationship outside, mm -hmm. this actually injure a lot um, in terms of the, that relationship or the marriage as it may be. What it starts to do, for instance, is that when the partner outside of the company maybe realizes or suspects or he has some he or she has some evidence that this person is probably going out with someone in the workplace mm -hmm. um usually they, they will engage that person and tell them the, the partner that look i have concerns over maybe your uh, whatever might be happening in that company and so on but the challenge that you have to be aware of is that there is when somebody starts to to go out with someone mm -hmm. or they start to do those things you have to also understand that naturally they want to protect themselves yeah um, so this is where confusion starts sometimes they even tell you you are making a big fuss there's nothing this is just a way colleague and blah blah they, they have a whole lot of reasons to a point where sometimes they can even make you feel guilty that you even asked they confuse you to a stage where you're even asking your own sanity. Am I right that I even asked that question to this person? Um, so sometimes there's a lot of gaslighting. Mm -hmm. and some people may be narcissists. They really will turn the situation around. Um, what that does now is that it creates a lot of uh, mistrust mm -hmm. because and 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 the, and the painful thing for those partners is that every time this person you see them dressing mm -hmm. going for work. And the, the, the person will be thinking about what is going to be happening in that workplace. Mm -hmm. So every time the person who comes back home, for those that are married, the, the, the partner who remained will always be thinking what exactly what happened in that workplace. So that puts a lot of strain on marriages. Mm -hmm. For those who are not yet married but they were maybe in courtship, that also could put a lot of strain on that um, relationship. So. These relationship workplace romances, they actually have a huge impact on the uh, relationships that partners have, those who are outside of the company. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, 
it is a very difficult thing for the partners because even when somebody says, please don't do this, or we have, have heard these stories, the, this person who's working could even say, oh, so you want me to stop working? Or what? Hey, you are just blowing me out of proportion. Uh, maybe if they are, the husband has, he receives 8,000, the wife receives 5,000, and they put the money together, so all of a sudden I say, are you going to be, be, buy my wig? Or are you going to be paying me money? So at that point, there's nothing that the husband can do. Uh, but deep down, they know that these things are happening. And sometimes they see things happening. And sometimes it also becomes even worse, where even disrespect comes in, mm -hmm. where the person, you know that you are two of you at your home, but you are packing three lunch boxes. Where is the other lunch box away? <laughs> so, For the Holy Spirit. For <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. So those things, they, they, they actually have a huge impact on, on, on the relationship. Uh, sometimes it could be a, the, the man himself who has started that. Mm -hmm. You found that before he was providing for food and other things at home, all of a sudden money has become a huge challenge. Why? Because it's also uh, sponsoring other activities outside of, of the home. So it, it is a very big challenge on, um, on the partners who are not working. And it's a very, very painful thing. That's why we actually encourage people to go through those things to actually seek professional help mm -hmm. because you can end up killing yourself where you are made to question your very existence. They even tell you are human enough to provide everything. So it's a very big challenge. Because of time, Mr. Kande, if you can also maybe briefly just explain the impact of workplace performance on productivity in the work environments. Yeah, so when it comes to the work environment, productivity mm -hmm. definitely gets to be affected. Uh, like we did mention, once employees start to see, number one, that there's favoritism, mm -hmm. they really don't want to put in uh, their labor base because they, they know, hey, those, uh, those who are loved by the bosses, they let them do it. So uh, that favoritism, that creeps in, uh, mm -hmm. starts to make people not to feel the need to put in their labor base. Uh, secondly, productivity also gets to be affected because employees, uh, you know, there's no unity, there's no teamwork mm -hmm. because when you know this one is going out with that one, really that there isn't much of team spirit there. So people don't want to, to work together. Um, the third issue that affects productivity is also now those uh, cut fights that may start to happen. Or sometimes it doesn't escalate to people fighting, but mm -hmm. you can see, you can even feel the tension if you are in the same team that this one doesn't talk to this one. Sometimes it's even interdepartmental, mm -hmm. where someone will say, I don't want to deal with those guys from that department. Or because they are fighting the work wife or work husband. So uh, productivity definitely gets to be affected in a very negative way, and you really don't want to run a company like that. Now, are there any legal risks associated with the workplace performance? Legal risks that come, first of all, it, like we said, one, it is going against your own company policies. Mm -hmm. So where the company has set clear policies around how employees are expected to behave, mm -hmm. we expect that they should behave as such. So uh, if they don't, then they have problems. Secondly, if you look at uh, cases of harassment, mm -hmm. uh, harassment is a big issue um, and by law, so if, for instance, if you're operating in Zambia, look at the Anti-Gender Based Violence Act of 2011, mm -hmm. um, basically just go to the interpretation of harassment, you will run away because it's, it's very, very uh, punitive. Uh, it, like we did mention, it focuses on uh, cases where the person has not even engaged physically mm -hmm. with you yeah. but if you say this is harassment and they can prove it it becomes a very big issue uh, even when there are conversations where that other person has not even responded mm -hmm. uh, because you cannot go and say no because uh, i was yes i was sending these messages or i was trying to reach out um, but the person has not responded so it wasn't uh, no so you have to be uh, very very careful Mm -hmm. um, even for phone conversation or even where a person sends another person to deliver messages or anything that is actually annoying to the person who is being harassed. So legally you have to really be very, very careful with uh, those kind of things to avoid harassment cases. Now what was, uh, does human resource and management play in managing workplace performance? Uh, the role of HR mm -hmm. and management is really first of all to 
create a, a, an environment, a culture for that company. Uh, we normally say create a performance, a high performance culture. Now, what that means is that management and HR should focus on creating an environment where people are focusing on work and not these fights and other things. Secondly, it's about creating the policies and procedures. Every company should realize that no matter how much they try to avoid these things, human beings are working in those companies and human beings have thoughts and they have feelings. So they have to create uh, some uh, policies that guide. Again, those policies should be clear and those policies should be within the provisions of the law. Mm -hmm. They cannot create policies that are against the other provisions in the law. Uh, thirdly, uh, management has to, and, and HR has to actually ensure that managers themselves are trained. Because it's one thing to have a policy, it's another thing in terms of practice. So people should be trained. And again, if you can't create these policies internally, uh, they can always go to consultants who can create these policies for them. So you do the training so that people know. The employees themselves, uh, as a fifth issue, they have to also again be trained. So they also know that these are my rights, this is how far I can go, this is how far my own boss can go, and there is a policy around how I should deal with the complaints if I have such a complaint. And in that way, you create a company where now people can easily work without having so many problems relating to workplace problems. Mr. Kwan, I did mention to say in as much as organization would have policies to maybe just guide on employees on how they should engage themselves in uh, romantic relationships. But I mean, people are people that would still mm -hmm. find themselves in relationships. Yeah. Maybe just a word of advice to people that are in uh, romantic relationships at uh, workplaces. What is your word of advice to them? <laughs> Oh, well, I don't like that. It's, uh -huh. it's very simple. Um, number one, check your workplace policies so that you don't find yourself in a situation when, where you are going against your own policies. Uh, secondly, make sure that you check your own uh, relationship status, uh, meaning what, <laughs> what are you into at that point and what are exactly are you expected to do in that relationship. So if you are in courtship or in marriage, there are those expectations. Um, then thirdly, be aware of the implications, both positive and negative. Uh, don't go into such, such relationship with your eyes closed. Uh, it feels, yes, there is love in the air and all those things, but those things can lead you into serious problems. So it's important to really be aware of the implications and then you choose which way you want to go. Otherwise, you also have your religion to think about and see what values does your religion actually provide in you and what you really want to do, uh, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. I think I, I think I pick one, check your relationship status. Yeah. I'm just holding on to, to, to that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an amazing conversation and thank you very much to everyone who's sent in the text messages. Mr. Kwanda, your last remarks as we wrap up this conversation. Really, it's just to encourage uh, people to work very, very well, mm -hmm. um, being aware that at the end of the day, we spend so much time in the workplaces and therefore a lot is bound to happen in mm -hmm. those uh, workplaces because it's not even half of the time, half of, more than half of the time, the workplace is where you, you'll be found. Therefore, it's important to again think about what you want to be, define yourself, uh, define at the personal level what is acceptable to you and what is not acceptable. Of course, taking into consideration again your religious beliefs, your policies of the company, so that as you work, you can really be more focused on productive things. And if you are an employee who is being approached and you are uncomfortable with those things, you again you have the right to tell that person that you are uncomfortable or you don't want to make things also very clear. We keep on emphasizing these things. You let your yes be yes and your no be no. No, yes, maybe. No, no, no. That's what, those are the things we are talking about. <laughs> and then tomorrow after you, you've started initiating, and again, because sometimes you there is a benefit you want. So mm -hmm. you want to run with this idea you are tagging someone alone, alone, mm -hmm. then you want to go and change after. No, be very clear that this is a no. Oh, this is a yes, based on, again, on your circumstances 
and all those uh, concerns that we talked about. For management and HR, mm -hmm. again, it's important that you create an environment, you make sure that you induct people, let people know what is acceptable. Uh, again, don't use your personal opinions, your feelings, your religious convictions. Look at what does the corporation want so that then you can guide your employees, your managers, and everybody works well. So at the end of the day, there's productivity in these companies. That is what matters. Mr. Wanda, thank you very much for making an appearance on Labor Matters. Thank you so much. Amazing to our viewers. You've been watching Labor Matters right here on KBN TV. So please, let's keep this conversation going by dropping your comments on our Facebook page, which is KBN TV. In the studio, I was with Mr. Owen Katongo Kabando, is Management and Leadership Advisor. Don't forget to follow him on all his social media platforms. We're talking about TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, just follow him and just get the knowledge. You don't want to miss anything. I have been your host, Patricia Chiram Until next Next week, same time and same channel, we've been talking about workplace romance. It's goodbye.